Hey, what's happening, Wargamers? Welcome back. We are about to partake in the second part of the first expedition into the Blackstone Fortress. We left our heroes, Yanis Drake, Ur-025, Locarno, es Esper Locarno, rather, and Rain and Rouse, uh, just as they had finished their second combat encounter. So there's a couple more combat encounters they could run into, plus a couple more challenges that they can run into. So let's go take another look into the Blackstone Fortress and see what happens to our valiant explorers. As we jump back into the uh, Blackstone Fortress, we got to find out what our next exploration card is going to be. I already shuffled them all up, so we are going to be getting, looks like another combat one with uh, three discovery points. All right, so we're going to get that set up and jump right into the action. So we have our board set up. Next thing we need to do is we need to figure out what exactly we're going to be fighting uh, in this particular instance. So we're just giving us a good quick shuffle here. All right, so for spot number one, we're looking at some spindle drones. So two spindle drones. For spot number two, we're going to be looking at uh, four Negavolt cultists. And for spot number three, we're going to be looking at five traitor guardsmen. So we're going to get that set up and set up the whole initiative track. Got the board all set up, getting ready to do the initiative track. Next up, we're going to take a look at uh, what our uh, fate, di or fate dice, I can't remember what exactly they're called. But we are looking at, oh, uh-oh. Okay, so we're going to use Esper and Locarno to uh, get back one of these fours. And it looks like the two. And then everything else, unfortunately, has to be discarded. So not a lot of these uh, bonus dice for us, which is really unfortunate. Uh, for uh, Esper and Locarno, his four dice, we're going to be looking at uh, not a bad selection there. Two threes, a five, and a six. So that's going to give him some nice options. For Ur-025, who's still inspired, ooh, that's not very good at all. So just uh, a couple light options there. He's not going to be able to mow through as many enemies as I would like. For Rain and Rouse, not a bad roll. 6, 1, 5, and 4. And then we have Yanis Drake, who we are looking at. Two fours, one, and a six. So all said and done, he's got a pretty good one. He might be... Uh, Hopefully, starting everything off for us. And uh, all that's left for us now is to determine the initiative track. So, what we're going to do is we're going to give this a quick... Oh, yeah, okay, that, that's correct there. Got a couple of these upside down there. We're just going to do a quick shuffle here. And determine the initiative track. And I think I still have one wrong way up. I do. Yeah, hostile group number one is wrong way up. So, let's keep shuffling this up. And just kind of hoping that uh, I can go before the guard, guardsmen do. Otherwise, I'm probably going to be putting on a couple wounds this uh, this phase. So what do we got here? We got Ur, followed by group... Oh, group number four should not be in there. I feel like I should reshuffle all this as a result. It's unfortunate. I would have liked Ur to go first. Especially considering I could have uh, done a gambit into getting him to go before everyone else. Or get Drake to go before everyone else. So let's see. Rain and Rouse, followed by Ur, Hostel Group Number One, Yanis Drake, Esper and Locarno, Group Two, and Group Three. All right, that's not too bad for me. So I'm going to get everything set up and ready to go, and we're going to jump into the first round of this uh, combat encounter. Okay, to start us off, uh, I am going to make use of uh, Yanis Drake's ability to do a gambit for free. Uh, he is going to get a success, so he's just going to change with Hostel Group Number One. And uh, get him a little bit further up in the uh, in the chain here. And then we are going to start off with Rain and Rouse. And I think what we're going to do with them is right off the get-go, we're going to just choose... Oh, geez, they don't even have a, a two to, to make... Yeah, you know, I'm going to take the two from the, uh, from the Blackstone dice. And we are just going to do a move-move action for both of them. So one, two, and one, two. Just get them right up to there. Uh, you know what, they'll they'll share a spot. And uh, then they have some dice here to try and uh, take care of some of the guardsmen here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to use... Oh, geez. Uh, we're going to use uh, the four here. And we are going to attempt to do a, uh, a stub pistol attack. It's not the best option here, but they're going to... Uh, no, we're gonna do, we're gonna do the sniper rifle attack actually. So we're gonna do the sniper rifle from here, and we're gonna just try and uh, pick off the the commander there. So it is a range of three. So we're using the purple die, 
and we're going to get no success. So we're going to blast away at the uh, the one there. We're going to do a stub pistol attack. And unfortunately, we can't do the uh, the double team on this one. So just going to do a stub pistol attack using the gray die here. And we are going to get a, a crit at least. So that's going to be three damage uh, against the against the uh, traitor guardsmen here, which only have two wounds. So that is fantastic for him, uh, which means uh, we're a little bit closer here to, to doing some good stuff. Uh, so we do have a couple more dice here. I think what I'm going to try and do is another uh, sniper rifle attack here. And we're going to try and take out the flamethrower, which we will with a critical success. All right. Excellent. So uh, they are cleaning up at the moment. We got one more sniper rifle attack, so we're going to try and take out this guy with the grenade. Um, he does have cover, so unfortunately, uh, even if I get a grievous wound, it's just going to be downgraded to a regular wound, uh, which is unfortunate, but such is life. And it doesn't matter because nothing happened from it anyway, and that is all of the dice for Rain and Rouse. Next up, we do have Ur025, and uh, we're going to use, a, we're just going to get that one out of the way. Here. Uh, no, we're going to start with the two, get that out of the way, and he's just going to move forward two. So one, two, he doesn't get to benefit from cover, so I'm not going to bother putting him behind it. And I'm then going to spend his one, and we're just going to get him a little bit further down here. Uh, so unfortunately, there is still going to be a little bit of cover granted to these two guys right here, but he is exposed. So we're then going to grab, I think, oh, well, I'm not going to use one of those dice yet. We're going to use the three, and we're going to do a uh, uh, an assault cannon here, and it does have the sustained fire. So when using two dice, what is it here? It's, uh, it's two attacks, and uh, it is at range two. So we do get uh, two of the nice little, uh, the nice little, what is this? I think it's a D12. Uh, so we're just going to see what happens. We're going to go against the guy without cover first, get a grievous wound, and take him out. And then he will just continue on and try and take out the guy with the grenade here. Uh, so that just gets downgraded and does nothing, uh, which is unfortunate. But I, I think I'm happy with that result. Yanis Drake is up next. We're going to start off by using his one and we're just going to move him up a little bit. Uh, we're then going to use the four because he's got a lot of good dice here. And he's just going to go one, two right to here uh, so we can avoid the cover <coughs> that those guys have access to. Uh, then we're going to use a flurry of attacks with that six of his. So with the flurry of attacks, it is going to be uh, three attacks. And this is going to be with the uh, the purple die here. So against the guy with the grenade is going to be nothing. Against the guy with the grenade again is nothing once again. And once more. Okay, so at least there's one grievous wound. They're taking him out. I did want to try and search here, but I think what I'm going to do instead is we're going to use... Uh, his flurry of attacks one more time for two attacks and we're just going to try and take out this last guardsman here nope and nope so the guardsman does get to live another turn that is going to bring us to the spindle drone so we actually got to go grab our trusty blackstone die here and figure out what the spindle drones are doing so the first spindle drone is going to be doing a 16 which in this case there is line of sight but not engaged and not within cover so with a 16, it's just going to be an advance action. So in this case, the advance action is, oh, I got it around here somewhere, one moment. So the advance action on the spindle drone, it's just gonna move towards the closest explorer. So one, two, and then it is going to make a, uh, an attack basically against the closest one, which in this case is Janice Drake. So rolling the nice little uh, six-sided gray die here, uh, nothing on that one. So the next spindle drone, is rolling a 20. I don't think I've seen a 20 on this one yet, uh, which is an alert status. So in the case of the alert status, I believe, yeah, so uh, the pulse threat is going up to level one, which means it's going to be a better die moving. And with the spindle drones now alerted, that does bring us to Esper Lacarno, and uh, hopefully I'm going to be able to take out this last guardsman there. 
So we're going to use one of his threes here. We're just going to move him up one, two. And, oh, what's the range on his stuff? So he does have a range of three, but there is cover. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to use one more of his threes. And we're just going to move him right up to there. And uh, we're then going to use, uh, oh, in this case, we're going to use the uh, the force stave. Because that is, that's uh, just a, an attack of one, uh, or sorry, on a four plus. And that is one of these wonderful... 12 sided dice and the guardsman does not have cover because we're right next to each other and it's just going to be a single wound on the guardsman of uh, so one of two and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to do that one more time nothing so the guardsman is going to live into the next turn uh, which means he is going to get a chance oh I, I got one of the fate dice left so we're going to try this one more time because I want to try and take him out Nothing still. Okay, so the Guardsman is going to live in this case. So uh, he's in a prime spot to do a little bit of damage to me, but I think we can weather it. So we do have the uh, Negavolt Cultist. These guys always kind of scare me. Uh, so we're going to see what exactly they're doing. So the first Negavolt Cultist is rolling a 17, which is going to be uh, a charge. So in this case, a charge is going to be moving towards the closest explorer and then attack that explorer. If there are no explorers adjacent, invisible to the hostile, move towards the closest explorer a second time. So, uh, you know, closest explorer looks to be Janus Drake here, and he's got a movement of three. So one, two, three. So he is getting within range here and gets to roll one of these wonderful little purple dice here. And the downside is, is that uh, these ones, uh, they ignore cover and no defense roll can be made against these. So this is gonna be a little bit painful, I think. Yeah, so Janus Drake is taking a grievous wound. So uh, my luck from the last game is uh, starting to run a little thin here. The next one is going to be rolling a 10. So in this case, it is just going to be a charge again. So one, two, three. And Janus Drake is once again going to be getting attacked. And thankfully, no damage this time. All right. Next Negavolt Cultist is a seven witch. Hey, what a surprise. It is a uh, charge again. So one, two... In this case, he can't actually get within range of anything. So he's just going to finish his move there. And then he's going to do one more move to get within range. But thankfully, he's not getting an attack. And the final cultist is getting a five, which uh, once again is a charge. So one, two, three. And because he can't finish his, uh, or he can't attack at that, he's just going to get right in there. So a little bit of damage onto, uh, onto Janus Drake here. Uh, because he couldn't make the uh, the save, that is a little unfortunate. So hopefully he this isn't going to hurt him too much. Um, but the Grievous Wounds are not something he can really recover from easily. Uh, which does bring us into the Spindle Drones. The, or not the Spindle Drones, the, uh, the Guardsmen. So we're just going to do this quickly because we only have the one Guardsman. So they're rolling a 17, which for them, uh, he is uh, engaged. So it's going to be an onslaught. So he's just going to attack twice. And uh, he's just going to go after uh, Janus Drake, I think, because of the uh, because of how wounded he already is. So uh, let's see. This is just the the Lasgun guy. So just rolling the purple die here. So nothing and nothing. So Janus Drake gets away a little bit on that one. But that is going to bring us to the end of the first turn of this combat encounter. As we hit the end of the first round, we do got to roll on the event table. And we are getting a seven. So on the event table for a seven, we're looking at changing encounter uh, conditions. So we're gonna draw an encounter card. If the card has a twist, we apply it for the rest of the combat. Otherwise, nothing happens. So we're just gonna go grab our encounter cards right here. And so uh, I believe that is a uh, that is a twist right there, I think, the debris. So it costs two hexes of movement instead of one to enter a hex with a cover hex side. All right. Well, that, that's not too bad, but uh, it is going to make things a little bit slower for us. But uh, hopefully we're going to be able to clear out some of these Negavolt cultists and, uh, you know, survive this next turn and get as many discovery points as we can. Um, oh, I almost forgot. We got to check to see if reinforcements come for the guardsmen as well, which thankfully they do not. So we're going to see what our initiative is looking like this turn. So we're looking at Janice Drake first, followed by Esper and Locarno. Hostile Group 3, which is the Guardsman. Group 1, which is the Spindle Drones. Ur, Rain and Rouse, and then Group 2. So I do like the fact that the uh, that the Negavolt Cultists are going last. That's going to give me a little bit of a leg up on this one. Because uh, obviously I don't want to be doing too much damage. Or getting damaged too much, rather. 
Next up, we got to find out what our uh, fate dice are looking like. And that is a lot of doubles right there. So I think at this point, we are going to use one of the support systems, which uh, I think is... Oh, what support system is it? There's uh, there's one support system here that allows me to... Yeah, here it is. It's for the support system for Long Hauler Gamma 3 Beta. So what we're going to do is, uh, once per expedition, we're going to actually take advantage of this and uh, get all five dice uh, in the pool because I think this is going to be an important turn to make sure that uh, I don't die. And having as many dice to work with uh, as possible is going to be very good here. Next up, we have the dice, uh, our action dice. So uh, for rain and rice, a couple ones, a, five, a six, and a three. So not the greatest. Uh, I'm not going to be able to really take advantage of double team there, which is not good. Uh, but it's something. For Ur. Okay, Ur is going to be just mowing some uh, some guys down with his uh, assault cannon, it looks like. Uh, Yannis Drake, who is now down to three dice, is looking at some decent dice here. He's not going to be getting a lot of flurry of blows, so he's probably going to be making use of his uh, of his fate dice a lot. And Esper, oh, that is a bad roll for Esper and Locarno. So he's not going to be able to do a whole lot for me this, uh, this round, unfortunately. So we're going to jump into it and see what happens. Before I forget, though, i got to see if any of my people got Inspired Tokens from the last turn. So, uh, Yannis Drake looking for a 2 or less. Nope. Rain and Rouse looking for a 5 or less. Nope. And uh, Ur is was looking for a 2 or less, but he did not get it either. Going to start off with uh, Janice Drake here, and uh, I'm going to try and take out some of these Negavolt Cultists. So we're going to start by using the, uh, the 5 that he rolled, and uh, getting 2 attacks, looking to try and get a couple Grievous Wounds here to take out some of these Cultists. So there's one minor wound uh, on this cultist right there. And the second attack is nothing. So we're going to dip in and grab some of those uh, fate dice. We're going to take the four first. And that is going to be a grievous wound taking one of the guys out, which is uh, very important. Uh, and then his second attack is another grievous. So he got two of the Negavolt cultists. And we're going to grab one more of those fate dice. We're going to grab one of the fives. And we are just going to try and take out at least one more Negavolt cultist here. That's one wound, and let's see if we can just finish him off. Bingo. Okay, so that's going to be three dead for uh, Yannis Drake there, which is good because those guys were kind of scary here. Uh, he does have a couple dice left, and I think what we're going to do is we're just going to start moving him down to this uh, point here. So he's going to take his last two dice, and he's just going to get to point number two. So when it comes around to it, he can uh, search that hopefully next turn. Carno now is going to use his uh, one, and he's just going to move right there onto spot number three, because uh, this way he's in range of both these uh, these enemies here. And he's then going to use his, uh, oh, geez, he, uh, it's a four plus. Okay, so he's going to use one of the uh, the fate dice here, one of the fives, and he's just going to uh, going to whack this guy with with his big stick for nothing. That's that's not good. Uh, he's going to use that last five. He's going to do it again. For nothing once again. Okay, so that's not good at all. Uh, so I think what I am going to do is I'm going to use his six. He is going to uh, search the uh, the point here. And we are going to get some Archaeotech. So he is just rolling in that Archaeotech at this point. And then uh, he's going to try his luck with his third eye. Uh, because it is the purple die, I think what I'm going to try and do is... Uh, I got to take out those Negavolt cultists. Oh, well, no, they're going last, so it doesn't really matter. So, you know what? I'm going to try and take out the guardsman there. No, and he's going to spend his last die to try it again. Nothing. So, uh, unfortunately, Esper Lucarno was not able to take uh, anyone out on this turn, which does mean that the guardsman is going to get a chance to do something in response. First up, we got to see if they reinforce, which they do not, which is good. So, the action he's going to take is going to be, I'm pretty sure this is going to be an onslaught here. 17 when he is engaged is definitely an onslaught. So he's just going to be rolling the uh, the purple die a couple times against me. So uh, against uh, Esper and Locarno, there's going to be one right there. And uh, I do have a defense die, the gray defense die. So we're going to see if he blocks it, which he does not. So that is going to be a minor wound on Esper and Locarno. And the second attack is going to be a Grievous Wound. Uh oh Okay, so i got to try and see if I can at least downgrade this to a regular wound. Uh, I think that's how it works. I'm going to double-check that in just a second, uh, which I think I needed a critical success, so I'm going to look into that. 
So in this case, it is just downgraded to a, uh, a minor wound. So thankfully it's not serious, but it is gonna reduce what Esperm can do in the uh, the coming turns. Uh, so yeah, gotta, gotta watch out for that one. Uh, that is gonna bring us into the uh, Spindle Drones here. And they're gonna be doing a three on their chart, which if I check this out here, so this, uh, this first one right here is uh, definitely within cover, uh, invisible. So he's actually gonna be doing an aim action. Okay, so I gotta find out here if the aim action still involves an attack, which I believe it does. So yeah, it attacks the, the furthest explorer that is in range invisible to that hostile, that attack ignores cover. So in this case, the, uh, the one furthest from it, let's see, we got uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five. So it's gonna be rain and rouse, uh, and we are up to the, the purple die for it. So it is going to be uh, a grievous wound because it does ignore cover. So Rain and Rouse do have their purple defense die, and it will just be downgraded to a uh, to a minor wound. But still, uh, we're starting to see some some issues come up here with my guys starting to get wounded. Uh, next up, we have the other drone who's going to be doing a nine, which is just going to be an onslaught. So with onslaught, I can't remember if they actually move. Uh, no, it looks like with onslaught they they don't uh, they don't actually move. They just attempt to attack tw twice. So in this case, it is the closest explorer. So let's see, we got one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four. So it's going to be Esperon or it's going to be uh, Janice Drake. I think he's going to go after Janice Drake. Uh, so because uh, well, at least I at least I'm in cover this time. So with Janice Drake, it's going to be nothing and one wound, but the cover ignores that. So that is going to end the Spindle Drones turn. Next up, we do have Ur025 who's going. He's going to start off by using one of the Fate Dice, the, the two there. And he's just going to use his Power Claw against the uh, the Negavolt Cultist there. So he is going to do one wound against him. I was hoping for a Grievous there, but uh, that was not to be, it seems. So he's actually going to spend another one of his dice and he's going to do it again. And that is going to be enough to, uh, to kill him. That is the other wound that was needed which means he's got uh, two dice remaining, which I don't know what I really want to do with him. Uh, I'm going to spend, I think what I'm going to do is we're going to move him. Oh, geez. Uh, we're going to put him, I think, like one, two. And then I think what we're going to do is we're just going to spend his uh, his six dice here. And we're just going to do a um, his assault cannon. So this is going to be uh, three times for a cost of, Five, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's not adjacent hex here. And so you know what? Instead of moving him there, I'm actually just going to move him right there. And instead of doing that, what he's going to do is he's just going to try and take out. I don't know. Let's let's take out one of the spindle drones. They're they're being a bit problematic. So it is going to do uh, one bit of damage to the spindle drone, but that is all. Let's bring us to Rain and Rouse. We're going to start off by using that one here, and uh, we're just going to... Uh, no, actually, we're going to start off by using the three, and we're going to do a, a double team action here. So, uh, Rouse is... I think that's Rouse. I can never remember. Uh, no, that's Rain. Rain is just going to move up there, and Rouse is actually going to do the same. Uh, then we're going to spend the, the one here to do a stub pistol attack, uh, just because we're, when right next to it, we can avoid cover. So we'll give this one to Rouse, I guess. Uh, nothing will happen there. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to attempt one more double team here just to try and get uh, get this guardsman killed. And uh, that is enough to take him out because we, with him being right next to cover, um, he doesn't actually get the benefit from it. So that is good. So it means we're just dealing with the spindle drones as we move into the uh, the next turn. But first things first, we got to see if the Negavolt cultists regroup. Thankfully, they do not. Then we got to check out the uh, event table which we get a six for the event table. So in this case, it's not dead yet. The leader must pick uh, one hostile that was slain during combat and is not returned to the battlefield and then deploy them as close as possible. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to just redeploy this uh, this guardsman there. So that was a little annoying. Just got, got him out of there, but such is life. Uh, but that is going to bring us to the, uh, the end of the turn here. Uh, so we're going to see if Hannah Drake gets any inspiration points. Looking for a six surrender. There's a six. So he is going to get uh, one inspiration token. 
Uh, and then we are looking at, uh, let's see here, uh, Ur is looking at a two under, nope. And Raiden Rouse is looking at a two under, nope. Okay, so we're gonna get the, everything set up for the next round. Starting off with the next round, our Blackstone dice. So we are losing uh, one of the sixes there, but we're keeping everything else. Thankfully, uh, Esper and Locarno is giving us that uh, that extra that extra success there. So that's good. Uh, we're gonna check out what our uh, initiative is looking like. So hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get rid of these spindle drones before too much problems arise. So you got Rain and Rouse, Lacarno, Ur, Hostel Group One, Three, Drake, and then Two. So once again, the Negavolt cultists are going to be the ones that we're least concerned with because they're already dead, and the odds of them reinforcing are, are slim. And that would just be absolutely terrible if they reinforced. But it is what it is. Um, and I think, yeah. So at, at this point, then. We're going to find out what everyone's dice are. Yannis Drake, he might only get three dice, but it's a one, five, and a five, so that's not too shabby. Uh, Lacarno was only looking at two dice. He might actually just have to recover this turn. No, not with those dice. He's not. So not with a one and a two. Ur, who's probably going to try and clean up the Spindle Drones, is looking at a two, three, and a six. So that should do some work there. And Rain and Rouse looking at three dice is a six five and a three so at least i can do a whole bunch of double teams there if i need it so we're going to go into the first round of this uh this turn rain and rose i think what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a double team action we're going to try and take out this uh this guardsman here so that will do it right on the first one so the other action is actually just going to be a uh, move action i guess so we're just going to bring uh rouse right up to there and I think what we're going to do is we're going to do another double team action here. We're going to start with the uh, the stub pistol into the uh, into the spindle drone for nothing. And yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to get rain into position as well. And you know what? Let's uh, let's do this one more time and try our best here. Um, you know, I should have put rain right there as well. So we're going to try and get rid of this uh, spindle drone, and that's the grievous wound right there. So perfect. So that does get rid of the spindle drone, gives me a little bit of breathing room. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to take one of those uh, fate dice and we're going to do a vitality roll for uh, Rain and Rouse to try and get rid of that wound, which they will successfully do. All right. So a little, little bit of good news uh, for my guys right there, uh, which means that brings us to Esper and Locarno. And I think what we need to do for him, we need some of his dice back. So uh, he's going to take... Uh, He's going to take his own vitality roll here and he will get one of his wounds back but he does still have a couple more a uh, couple more things here that uh, he might need to do uh so i think i don't want to use up too many dice uh in, in this instance so i believe what we're going to do is we're going to just get him moving over here so we're going to take his two regular dice and go one two three four right over to there uh because i want to start getting one of these portals ready to go but that is his two other action dice er 025 is up next he's going to take that two and he's just going to go one two because I, I don't want to have to take too much action to move through cover i think i've been forgetting to do that with esper so you know what? i think esper and Locarno would actually be right there still uh i'm actually going to take one more of his of his movements here oh you know what no what i'm going to do is i'm going to spend that six and I'm going to do a uh, an assault cannon attack. I wanted to do a power claw, but I think the assault cannon is what I got to do here, because I got to try and take out this last drone. So, and that would do it right there. Perfect. Which means I will take his three, and he's just going to get right over here onto spot number one, and um, he's going to spend one of the uh, one of the uh, fate dice there, and we're going to draw a discovery card, and he's going to get some archaeotech. So that's actually his first archaeotech of this expedition. And that is going to bring us to uh, to the end of his turn. We need to see if any of the uh, enemy groups are regrouping. So uh, the Spindle Drones will not be coming back. The Negavolt Cultists will not be coming back. And that's going to bring us to uh, Drake's turn. He's going to spend one of his uh, five dice here. and uh, Well, the five he rolled. And he's going to draw a uh, Discovery card. And he's going to get some Archaeotech. And I think what he's uh, going to do next is... Uh, He's got to spend a lot of movement to get anywhere at this point. So I think what we're going to do for him is he's going to spend both his uh, movement dice. He's going to go one and then 
Unfortunately, I don't have enough dice to get through there. I'm hoping that I can maybe get the portal for this one right here. Uh, but I don't know if that's something that's going to happen. Uh, but then that takes us to group number two, which is going to be reinforcing. Uh-oh. Okay. So I'm going to have to find out how many are coming back. In this case, we're getting two guardsmen back, and they got to deploy as close to an explorer as possible. So they're just going to come right through this gate here and uh, take a give a mean eye to, to Ur there. Uh, but at the very least, they don't get to act on the turn they come in. So I'm safe for a turn here. And uh, then we do go to the event die here. And on a 13, we are going to be doing uh, an escape chamber. So the leader replaces the portal furthest from any explorers with a maglev. So in other words, I wanted the portal to be right over here or over here. Instead, we get the portal way over there. So yay! But anyway, uh, Rain and Rouse got to roll for Inspired and they're looking for a 4 under which they got so they are going to get an inspiration point there which is great and we're going to see if Ur gets one as well which he does not and that's going to take us into the next turn checking out what our fate dice are and we have so far a lot of threes a one and a six so i'm going to get three of those thankfully because of uh, esburn uh, but it means i'm a running a little shy on resources that was a one that just flipped over there and now we got to see the re uh so it, group two is first, then three, uh-oh. Then Esburn, then group one, and then everyone else. Okay, so this might put some hurt on our uh, explorers this uh, this turn. So we're going to see just how much damage we take. Um, hopefully it's not enough. I would like to try and still go through at least one more encounter here. But we're going to find out what actually happens. Uh, but for Rain and Rouse, we got to find out their action dice. So some twos, a six and a four. So at the very least, we are going to be seeing uh, some uh, some double teaming there, which is excellent. Ur is looking at uh, a three, four, and a five. So not too shabby. Janice Drake with his three dice. We're looking at a two, three, and a three. So not even enough to do some flurry of blows there. So that's not very good. And uh, we got uh, Esperin Locarno with a three, five, and a six. So not too bad there, but the first turn is going to be for group two, which uh, I'm trying to remember. Group two was the uh, Negavolt cultists. Oh no, they're going to be reinforcing as well. They are a large base. So I believe for Negavolt cultists on a large base, that is going to be one. And they will pop back up right next to, uh, to uh, Janice Drake there. So that's going to be something I have to deal with. Uh, and then group three, first off, we see if they reinforce a bit, which they do not, thankfully. But we do have to see what they're going to be doing. So they are both engaged with Ur. So uh, the sergeant there on a 15 is looking at an onslaught. So the uh, the sergeant, which has the pistol and the melee weapon, is looking at uh, rolling the two purple dice. Which is going to do one damage to Ur. But uh, thankfully Ur does have his nice, uh, strong uh, de uh, defense die. That he does get to re-roll, which is a good thing because that failed. Oh, it still failed. So Ur is going to be taking uh, taking a damage here. Okay. And because it's an onslaught, he does get to attack again. So there is a Grievous Wound coming through here. So hopefully... No, but with a re-roll... Okay, so he is going to block the Grievous Wound at least. So that is something. Now the next guy with the grenade is looking at a 17 which is going to be uh, an onslaught as well. Now with the grenade, that is just one of these uh, little dice here. So nothing and nothing. So Ur is getting off a little bit light on that one, not getting a grenade to the face. But thankfully that will bring us into the Explorer's turn. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna try and do a bit of a mad dash. So Esper Locarno, he's just gonna spend all his dice and go one, two, or actually no, one, two, three, four, five six and then i think he's gonna spend he's gonna spend uh, uh he's not gonna spend any fate dice to get through there i, I think uh, i think we're okay to get him through to another turn uh but that is gonna bring us to group one which is the spindle drones which will also be reinforcing oh this is not a good turn for me it looks like because the spindle drones on small bases on a one should be getting their full group back i believe so they're getting get, let's see here, to the wards the closest explorer. So I think they're just going to go right down there. So I got to get on a dodge here. So I think what I got to do is we are going to try and uh, we're going to try and 
and take some stuff out with Ur here. And I just don't know what yet. So, oh, I'm really not sure how I want to do this. So I think what we're going to do is Ur is just going to do a, a couple power claw attacks against the, the guardsmen. So that's one Grievous to take out the sergeant. And he's going to spend his other die to do it again. And that is another Grievous. Okay, so that, that's good there. I think Ur has uh, earned using one of the fate dice to, uh, to move a little bit. So he's just going to move two over to there. But that will end his turn. Rain and Rose is up next, and I'm going to actually take the six that we rolled right here to use a grapple hack, uh, a grapple hook ability from Rouse, and he's just going to line of sight all the way over to there because it is within line of sight. So he is nice and safe at this point, and uh, Rain is then just going to use the rest of the dice and go one, two, three, four, five, six uh, to get him over there. And I think, yeah, you know what? I'm going to save the rest of these dice for uh, for Drake here. Uh, who really should have actually gone before Rain and Rouse now that I'm looking at him because he had the initiative. So what we're going to do with Drake is I, I don't, I can't risk some of these guys going first. So we're going to take that six that's in the, uh, the fate dice there and we're going to do a flurry of attacks. So we're going to do three attacks uh, trying to take out the, uh, the Negavolt cultist. So nope, nope, and nothing. That was absolutely terrible. So what we're going to do is we are just going to uh, to attempt that again. Uh, oh, no, we can't because we have no force. So we're just going to do uh, some pistol and rapier attacks here. Just trying to take him out. So the first one. Okay, good. That will remove him. And uh, I think what we'll go from there is he's just going to use his last two dice. He's going to be moving through cover. So he's going to go one, two. And I think that's uh, as far as he can really move. He's going to use the one. Uh, just to get into the uh, into the uh, the elevator there, the maglev, and that will take us to the end of this turn. So we got to see the event dice. So we're looking at a four on the table. So this is not quite dead yet. All right. So we're going to get a guardsman back here, and then uh, we got to place him as close to an explorer as possible. So we're just going to put him right back there. He's going after uh, he's going after Ur in this case. That's frustrating. Uh, but we're going to see if Ur gets a little bit of an inspiration point here, which he does not. And how about Yannis Drake? He also does not. So that's going to end the turn. So we're going to go into what's hopefully going to be the last round of combat. So we're going to find out what the initiative track is looking like. And we're going to get all our dice rolled up here. So looking for, uh, hopefully the explorers are going to go first. So we got Ur going up first. Then we got Hostile Group 1, which is the uh, drones. Rain and Rouse. Drake. Espern. Okay, good. So I think this is going to be the last round of combat for us because I think we'll be able to safely get out of dodge at this point. Hopefully, anyway, as long as things do not go very poorly. Uh, so now we got to find out what dice we're, we're looking to play with here. So our fate dice, we are looking at... Uh, oh, that's actually not too bad. So Espern will give us one of those twos. And so we got four fate dice to work with. And then for uh, Esper himself, he's looking at a 1-1 one, one, and a 4. So I think that's enough to uh, get him into the uh, the Maglev and maybe get him some health back. And Drake is looking at two sixes and a 3. So he's definitely going to be... Oh, he can't try to get health back because that's a Grievous Wound. Of course it is. Ur is looking at uh, two threes, So that is enough for some double movements. And Rain and Rouse is looking at a bunch of good dice here that don't really matter because they're not really doing much of anything here. So, now we run into the interesting issue here where uh, we are looking at uh, at the spindle drones going before a lot of the heroes here. So I gotta figure out if I want to try and take out the drones or if I'm gonna try and uh, get everyone to safety first. And I think, because if, if I don't take out some of the drones, I think the problem we're looking at is that Oh, you know what? Uh, oh, geez. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm going to do in this case. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is Ur is going to use the six that was in the fate dice here. And he's going to do an assault cannon attack against the spindle drones, which is the uh, the nice big blue die here. And he will do one wound against the spindle drone, followed by nothing. But I think there's three attacks on Yeah, there's three attacks on that one. So it is enough to take out one of the spindle drones, thankfully. 
And I think what we'll do with Ur is he's then going to use that five. And he's going to do it again because I want to try and take out those drones. So that's going to be uh, one regular wound followed by a Grievous. So that does take out the Spindle drones, which means they are probably not going to be an issue here. And then he is just going to use uh, his own uh, his own two dice here. He's going to go one, two, and then one. Uh, he's already used um, two of the Fate dice, so unfortunately he can't uh, can't really do anything else here. So he's he's stuck there, which is going to bring us into group one for the Spindle drones. Which oh no, is a four reinforced? No, a four is not a reinforced, thankfully. So no more Spindle drones that I have to deal with. So that's going to bring us to Rain and Rouse. And they're just going to, uh, yeah, get into, uh, they're just going to spend all their dice. They're going to be in the Maglev, followed by Yanis Drake, who's already there. Uh, then Esper and Locarno, who's just going to spend his dice to get into, he's going to spend two of his dice to get in there. And then he's going to spend one of his dice to do a Vitality roll to try and get back some health. Successfully, I might add. So he's coming out of this encounter with, with full health again. So that's excellent. Um, but it does bring us to uh, the Negavolt Cultist who will not reinforce, and the Guardsman, who will also not reinforce. But we have this one last Guardsman here, who's going to be operating on a 6, which he's in cover. Uh, so he's just going to be doing uh, an aim action. So he's going to be ignoring cover against uh, Ur, who doesn't get it anyway. And he's going to be firing uh, one of these little purple dice here for a Grievous Wound. <laughs> oh, goodness. So Ur does get a chance to defend against this. Uh, he does get a reroll. I think I'm going to take my chances, do the reroll here, which paid off. So he he is going to he is going to downgrade that uh, that grievous down to a uh, to a regular. Or no, I think the, he ignores it because it's a critical success, which is going to bring us to the end of this turn, which means the event die. We had a nine, which in this case is a changing conditions. I'm not going to bother drawing it because we're pretty much at the end here. Uh, but we are going to see if there's anyone inspired. Ur needs to roll a four under, which he is. So Ur is getting good and expired here. So he's got two inspiration tokens. And now we're just going to find out what the initiative is. And as long as Ur is going before the uh, the guardsman, we are going to get out of dodge. So we're just going to do a quick shuffle up here. And let's see. So of course the guardsmen are going first. All right, so that is our breakdown here. Guardsmen are up first. So they do get one last chance to do some damage to Ur. Uh, and we'll see what happens there. But otherwise, we are getting out of town here. So the Guardsmen are also going to reinforce on top of all that. Because of course they are. So the Guardsmen will get the, uh, two more guys popping up right there. And this little guy with the last gun here is going to be doing a one, which I think is an aim action uh, for the Guardsman. Uh, it is an aim action. So he's going to fire at Ur, ignoring cover, and Ur is going to try to defend it, which he will. And then that will bring us to Rain and Rouse, who just kind of do their own thing. Uh, then group number one, the Spindle Drones, will not reinforce, followed by Ur, who's just going to spend his points to get in there. And uh, we are going to get to the basically the end of the round. So we're going to go check out what happens in the Maglev. They're all back on the Maglev at this point. I do got to finish off some of the uh, the exploration round stuff here. So we're going to see if uh, if Ur is fortunate enough to recover some of his health here. Because uh, thankfully he does not have a Grievous Wound. So we're going to roll and we're going to get one success, which is enough to give him his health back. Now sadly, <coughs> Yanis Drake is not so lucky in that case. Because uh, he is uh, he's stuck with a Grievous Wound. Uh, but that does also mean we go into the next step, which we're going to find out what the next exploration is. And we got ourselves a challenge. So we got the Shadow Ambush here. The explorers split up and search a chamber and are suddenly attacked from the shadows by a group of Urghuls. Place the miniatures for the explorers in a row. Place an Urghul beside each explorer in leader order. Each explorer takes one weapon action, using it to attack the Urghul beside them as if they were adjacent and visible to the explorer. Then each Urghul that has not been slain makes an attack with their claws and talons against the explorer they are beside. Keep on attacking like this, first with the explorers, then with the Urghuls. If an explorer has slain the Urghul beside him, they can use their weapon action to attack an Urghul that is beside another explorer. Oh, okay. Uh, as if the Urghul was adjacent and visible to them. If an explorer is taken out of action and the Urghul attacking them returns to the shadows and is removed, continue fighting this way until all the Urghul are slain 
or the explorers are all out of action. All right, so we're gonna put Ur right at the front there, followed by uh, followed by Janice Drake, Esper Lacarno, and then Rain and Rouse. And we're just gonna go grab my trusty little Ur ghouls who we've not actually seen in this combat yet, and they're just gonna line up against these uh, explorers, and we're gonna try our best to see what we can do here. So, I guess we just, uh, is it just any, uh, any attack here? Uh, takes one weapon action. Okay, so, uh, Ur is gonna try and take out his Urghul, and he will with that successful, uh, Grievous Wound, which brings us to, uh, Giannis Drake, who just gets his nice purple die. We'll also take his out, so that's a, that's a good start so far. Uh, Esper Lacarno gets his fourth stave. And uh, is it just an attack here? Uh, I think it might be. I'm going to double check that. I'm going to work off the assumption that they got to do the full three wounds to the, uh, to the creature there. So that Urgul has uh, one wound on him. And then Rain and Rouse will, looking for that critical here, will put one wound on him, which means... The Urghuls are going to attack back. So, uh, against uh, Espern, that's going to be a grievous wound. And I don't think I get to do any defense rolls against this, which is uh, highly unfortunate. And then against Rain and Rouse, nothing. Uh, which means, I think then that puts us back to Ur here, who is just going to try and take out... Yep, he'll take out this last Urghul. And then uh, Drake will not do it. And then Espern will take out this last one. So thankfully not a lot of damage, but that is another grievous wound on one of my characters. So that's going to make the uh, the next couple uh, next couple things a little bit more challenging, I think, uh, because we are uh, quickly running out of wounds here. And I don't know how long uh, I can really withhold it, because especially considering, I think there's, there's one more combat. There's one more combat mission here, so I'm going to have to decide whether or not I want to go through with it or not. So I think we are going to continue on because there is only one more combat and there's two more challenges. So I think what I'm going to do is if I get the combat, I'm going to do that. And then I think I'm safe to do the rest of the challenges. Uh, if I get a challenge, I'm going to do one more challenge. And I think then I might end it after that. Uh, but let's see what happens. We got ourselves a combat. And it looks like it's a nice easy one, actually. Only uh, only two, uh, two challenges there. So that is going to be pretty easy, actually. So we're going to get that set up and take a look at it. Got a board set up there. So only two uh, two possible uh, enemy groupings here, but the portals are quite far away and I do have a couple bottlenecks that I'm gonna have to work through here. So we're gonna find out what we're actually fighting and we have some Traitor Guardsmen. So seven Traitor Guardsmen in group one and two Spindle Drones, drones in group two. Gonna find out what we're looking at for initiative order here. And I think I'm just gonna, this one is gonna be one I try to get, just get out of as quickly as possible because that is a lot of guardsmen there and I don't really want to deal with that. So we got Drake, Ur, Group 2, Lucarno, Group 1, and Rain and Rouse. So starting off with the first turn here, we do have Janice Drake who is leading everything off. Uh, and I think what I'm going to attempt to do here is uh, <clears throat> I'm going to be a little bit gutsy on this one, and I'm going to use one Fate Die and then Janice Drake's three result, and he's just going to move right up to here, uh, because then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and flurry of blows as many of these uh, Traitor Guardsmen away as humanly possible, just because, our flurry of attacks, sorry, just because the, the more of those guys I can get rid of, the easier this is going to end up being for me. So we're going to start by taking one of his sixes and we're going to do some uh, flurry of attacks here. So this is going to be uh, three flurry of attacks. I'm going to start with the against the flamer. And that is going to be one guy right off the bat. Uh, next up is going to be the last gunner. And that is another one. Okay, so I'm getting kind of lucky here. Uh, his last flurry of attack is nothing. But what we're going to do is we're going to blow that other six here. And we're going to do this again. And we're going to try and take out those two guys right there. So there's one more. So he's actually having a pretty good run of this so far. Uh, and this is going to help me uh, pare things down considerably. Uh, nothing there, but I do have one last attack. Nothing. 
So he did manage to take out three guys. I could theoretically try to do one more uh, flurry of attack on this one. And you know what? I, I think I'm going to do, I'm going to take that four that's in there. And that's his second fate die. And we're going to just try and take him out. And there it is. So he just successfully took out four guardsmen. So that's really big for me, uh, which is really good because it, it's going to ease up <coughs> some of the pressure and it's going to mean I, I have a realistic chance of actually finishing this expedition. Uh, so we're going to go on to Ur's turn. And in Ur's case, I think all he's going to do is uh, he's just going to move up towards the spindle drones here. So he's going to take all three of his dice. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, just to get right up there. That, that's his three action dice. And then he's going to take the uh, the last remaining fate die here. And uh, he's just going to try and punch a spindle drone right in the face with his, uh, with his claw. And he will successfully get one with his, uh, with his uh, claw there uh, doing some damage. So that is good because then that we're going to go into the spindle drone's turn. So first off, are they going to reinforce? No reinforcement. Instead, all they are going to do is a 16 against uh, against Ur here and he is uh, he is engaged so this is going to limit the options so what are we looking at for that for a 16 we are looking at an onslaught so we're just going to get a, a pair of attacks coming in from the spindle drone uh, there is no threat level at this point so it's just going to be the great eye so we have no damage and no damage so Ur is walking away kind of nicely with this one uh, so next up, we go to Esprin Locarno. Revision, because there is one dead drone, uh, I actually had to roll the uh, the purple die here. So we're going to do that for the drone's attacks. So that is going to be one uh, Grievous Wound, which... Uh-oh, let's get the reroll in there. So it will be downgraded to a regular wound, but that does mean Ur is a little bit less uh, uh, action-oriented now. And then it's going to be another Grievous Wound which so far is not looking good. Oh, okay. So Ur is not looking happy with that one. He's going to have to take some, a little bit of actions to try and recover himself a bit. Uh, so that alert status really kind of hurt there. <clears throat> anyway, now we're going to move on to Esburn. So Locarno is, I think, just going to... He's going to take his two ones and go one, two, three, four, right up to there. And, uh, oh, let's see. He does have a four here, so he can do a... Uh, a third eye, and I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to attempt to do a third eye against the uh, the spindle drone, because uh, he is rolling the uh, the blue die here. Um, sadly, he won't be able to kill it, but he might be able to do a little bit of damage to it. So we're going to see. So it is going to be a, a grievous downgraded to a, a regular wound. Uh, so sadly, it's not killing, but it is something. Uh, but that does end Esburn's turn because unfortunately he's grievous and only has three actions, which does bring us to the guardsman's turn. So. At this point, I'm feeling I kind of left uh, Drake a little uh, a little exposed here. And we're going to see a 19 on their uh, their behavior chart. So they are in cover, um, and they do have line of sight. And I think everything has some form of, uh, of ranged attack here. What did I roll, a 19? All right, I'm going to have to take a look at the chart here. Okay, so in this case, none of them have line guns. So we're, we're starting to, uh, we're just going to be looking at the, uh, the close range. So he's just going to charge forward, uh, and in this case with a charge, it's just a single attack that goes on it afterwards. Uh, but he does have a pistol and a melee weapon, which we're looking at a regular, uh, regular just a bit of damage here. So I do have a defense die, which is the purple one, which is nothing. So uh, he is going to take a little bit of damage there. And then we do have uh, a couple more. So we're going to do the guy with the grenade, which is going to be a nine. So in this case, we are looking at an onslaught here. So with the grenade, he's just rolling the uh, the purple die for two attacks. So nothing. And, uh-oh, grievous wound. Uh, okay, so I am behind cover, so that's going to be going down to just a regular wound. And then I do have my defense. So thankfully, I am going to block at that time. And then the sergeant there is looking at a result of 11, which is going to be a charge. So he's just going to charge in, and uh, he does have the pistol and melee weapon. So we're looking at the two purple dice here, and nothing on that one. So that is getting me through here. And I think I forgot to roll for reinforcements, which they're not getting reinforced. Okay. So not looking so hot with uh, with the Anis Drake, but uh, <clears throat> I'm going to just try and blast through this one as fast as I can. So let's see what Rain and Rouse can do. 
So with Rain and Rouse, uh, they're going to get up and they're going to go reinforce Janice Drake there. And I'm going to use a series of, uh, <coughs> I believe, yeah, I, I'm going to use a couple of the uh, the double team actions. So I'm going to take those two twos, and it's just going to be one, two, three, four. And I think from there, what we're going to do is we're going to use another one of these for another double team action. And they're going to just get right into this uh, hex. And they're going to do one more double team action. And uh, they're going to attempt to take out, I guess, this guy right here because they get to avoid the cover for it. So they are going to be using, they're each going to use their stub pistol. So Rain is going to do a regular wound and Rouse will do nothing. So just one wound through, not enough to take him out, uh, but enough to at least hurt him. But that will bring us to the end of the round. But first up, we're going to see if anyone gets any inspiration points. Uh, Ur did kill one thing, so he gets uh, two or less. Oh, so close to the one, so no. Uh, Yannis Drake, <coughs> on the other hand, did kill four guardsmen, so he's looking at eight or less. And that is an inspiration point, so that is going to put him up to two, which is fantastic. If I can actually hit three, that would be even better, because then I'd be able to do a, a free search action somewhere. Uh, and then we have our event table which is going to be a 15 on the event table. And a result of a 15 is actually going to be giving somebody an inspiration point. So there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to give that inspiration point to Janice Drake because that way uh, I can do a free search action even without a discovery point. And uh, I think that is going to be really helpful because <clears throat> I want to try and come away with as much Archaeotech and clues as I possibly can. Uh, but that does officially bring us to the end of this round. So we're going to check out what the initiative order is and then what all our dice are. And, oh, everything's flying away from me here. Let's do this again. Okay. So let's see what our initiative is. So we're starting off with Rain and Rouse, Esburn, also Group 1, so that is the Guardsmen, Group 2, so the uh, Spindle Drones, Ur, and Janus Drake. So, I think what I might be doing is I'm probably going to be spending a couple, uh, some die here to maybe do a, probably going to do a covering fire, actually. I, I think what's going to happen, I think Drake and Espern are going to do a covering fire, uh, just to get them up there. And I think I'm okay with the spindle drone going before Ur in this case. So, we're going to see our fate dice. And let's see here, we got, uh. A couple doubles here, so we lose the one, we lose a three. Uh, actually, we lose both ones. So we're going to take the four and the three for Esper. So unfortunately, we don't have a lot of extra dice to, to worry about in this case. Uh, and then Drake gets two dice, two action dice. We got a five and a two, because he is wounded a little bit. Uh, Esper and Locarno with his three dice. We're looking at a two, a three, and that one was cocked, cocked again, and a five. So he's got some options there. I think he might actually just be attempting to summon a, uh, a transport. Rain and Rouse are looking at a six, two sixes, a one and a two. So you've got some options there, which is fantastic. <clears throat> and then Ur with his one die, because he is wounded, is looking at a two. So he doesn't have a whole lot of options there. So I'm gonna have to figure something out to, uh, to kind of help out Ur there. Uh, but we do go into the first turn. And we're going to start with Rain and Rouse. We're going to we're going to take that two, and we're going to do a um, a double team action. So we're going to do a pair of uh, stub gun attacks or stub pistol attacks. We're going to try and take out this guardsman there. No, but then that was Rain, and then Rouse, nothing. So I'm going to take a six, and we're going to do that again. So there's uh, one point of damage to it, which gets downgraded because oh no, there is no cover. So that one point of damage is enough to kill him. And then the other stub gun attack will go against, I guess, that guardsman there, which is going to be, you know, a one, but nothing happens. Uh, and I think what we're going to do from there, <clears throat> I think I'm going to take that one and we're going to just move, just going to move uh, rain in there. And we're going to take that six and we're going to do a, um, the stub, uh, the double team stub gun uh, to him again and hope for the best here. So um, using his stub gun first, Nothing. Uh, and then we're going to use Rouse's stub gun, which unfortunately turns into the gray for nothing as well. So sadly, he wasn't able to do it. Uh, for Yanis Drake, because we're just going to quickly do this because he doesn't have a whole lot of actions here. 
Uh, he is actually going to... I think what he's going to do is he's going to use the two to move into cover here. That's his two dice. And then he's going to use his five to do a uh, flurry of attacks, hopefully trying to take someone out. And I think what we're going to do is we're going to try taking out the sergeant first. There's one damage. And then his second attack, nothing. So he hasn't taken the sergeant out. So I think what we're going to do is he's going to spend his... He's going to spend one of the fate die. He's going to spend the uh, the four. And he's going to do a flurry of attacks again. And that is enough to take out the sergeant at that point. Excellent. Okay. So that gets that out of the way. All right. And I think that uh, he's going to not use that last remaining uh, uh, action yet. So that is going to bring us... Uh... No, you know, he's going to try a pistol and rapier attack against the, uh, the guardsman with the grenade. And just do a point of damage. So nothing too shabby. Uh, but that's going to bring us into the hostile's turn. Starting with the spindle drone. Do they get reinforced? No, no reinforcements. And what is he going to do? So he's engaged with Ur at the moment. So we are looking at a, uh, oh, a fallback action. Okay, this is going to be a little bit helpful for me, I think. So with the fallback option, uh, we're going to double the hostile's move value. So it's going to move four. And it's going to move, uh, it's going to try and move out of line of sight, or at the very least, as far away um, as possible. So it's just going to go one, two, three, four. So it's just going to go back and hide there. Uh, so that's that's super helpful for me, uh, which is good because I'm, like I said, I'm trying to kind of finish off this, ex uh, this uh, combat experience before I lose too much health. Uh, and the guardsmen... Oh, they're going to be reinforcing. So uh, they are on small bases, I believe. Yeah, they're on small bases. So they're going to be getting two guardsmen back. So uh, <clears throat> bam, bam, right there. So I'm going to have to deal with that one uh, pretty quickly here. And then the grenade guardsman, who is engaged. Uh, so and rolling a six. Let's see, what is he going to be doing? He is going to be doing an onslaught. And uh, I think he's going to onslaught against... Uh, he's going to do one on Drake and one on Rain and Rouse, I think. I think that's what he's going to do. So against Drake, nothing. And against Rain and Rouse, nothing. So nothing happening to either of those, <coughs> which is yeah, good for me. Um, so yeah, that's going to bring us into uh, Ur's ability. Or Ur's turn, rather. And Ur is going to use that last fate die that I have available. And he's actually going to do a vitality roll to try and recuperate. And yeah, okay, so that's great. He's going to... Oh, geez. Um, he's going to turn that Grievous into a regular wound, I think. I thought about getting rid of the other wound, but I don't think I want to do that. I, I think what we're going to do is we're just going to get rid of that, that Grievous wound. Um, he does still have a two. So I think... What we're going to do is he is going to recuperate one more time, I think. Yeah, I'm going to recuperate one more time with him. So nothing. So unfortunately, no dice there. Um, which leaves us with Esper Meccano, who is going to use one of his dice to get up to the objective point. And then he's going to use that 5 plus to do a discovery check. So we're going to get a little bit of Archaeotech there. So he is just swimming in that Archaeotech. <coughs> which he loves. And I believe what he's going to do is he's just going to then stand next to this portal here because uh, next turn, hopefully, he will be able to uh, summon uh, some of the uh, the Maglev and will be able to get out of dodge. Uh, but that is going to bring us to the end of this turn. Going into the end steps, we're going to see if uh, Jan oh, Janice Drake can't actually be inspired anymore. Uh, but Rain and Rose can, and they are not. So no more inspiration there. Uh, but we are just going to go into the uh, the next churn and see how everything comes out. Uh, with the event table, first off, we have a 15 plus, which we have another point of inspiration. So you know what? We're going to give that bit of inspiration uh, to Ur, I believe. So he can maybe do something with that. And yeah, okay. So that that's, that's good right there. And we're going to see what the initiative track is looking like as we move into the... Uh, what well, may be one of the last turns of this uh, this combat encounter. This has been a nice quick one so far, which I like. All right, so let's see what we're looking at. <clears throat> also group one, so the guardsmen are going first, followed by Lacarno, Drake, Rain and Rouse, the Spindle Drone, and Ur. 
So this one's a little bit rough at this point because, I mean, all those guardsmen are standing right there and they can lay some beat down on, on my team here. So we're going to see what sort of advantages we might be able to pull out of this. So our fate dice, what are we looking at? I think, okay, so we are going to get four dice out of this one because uh, that two, unfortunately, is a double, but Esprin will give us one of those. And then for Esprin himself, he's going to get three dice. And he's, oh, boxcars all the way, which is kind of unfortunate he's nowhere near combat because that would have been really helpful. Uh, for Drake and his two dice, we're looking at a six, and that three is cocked. Oh, my goodness. Okay, that's a lot of sixes so far. Uh, Ur is looking at, holy jumping. <laughs> what is going on here? Okay, and let's see what Rain and Rouse get. I, I have expected four more sixes to show up there. Uh, so nothing fancy with them. That's probably just going to be a bunch of double team actions uh, as we see what happens. And I don't think I can risk doing a gambit with uh, Janice Drake. Um, just because I uh, I need to get a success. You know what? No, I, I'm not going to risk a, a gambit with him, I don't think. I, I, I think I just got to kind of let him... Let them weather the attacks and see what happens here. So that's going to bring us to the first action, which is going to be the Traitor Guardsman. First up, we see if they reinforce anymore. Uh oh, okay, so they are going to reinforce a little bit more. They're getting four more baddies. So one, two, there we go. And oh, you know, what? I got to quickly look up to see how this works when uh, when they're bunched up like that. And once you know what, I've been doing something wrong. When uh, hostiles reappear, apparently they do get a chance to act. So uh, this is going to be a little bit painful. So what we're going to do is uh, <clears throat> we're going to do the reinforcement ones first. And they are just going to start swinging in. So the sergeant is going to be doing a seven and he's engaged. So we're looking at uh, an onslaught there. And he's got a pistol and melee weapon. So uh, against uh, Rain and Rouse... So we do have uh, one crit there, which Rain and Rouse will hopefully block. Nope, so that's going to be a grievous wound on them. So this is uh, this is going to be a bit of a painful turn, I think. Uh, and it is an onslaught, so he's going to do it again. So thankfully nothing there. So the uh, Duder with the Flamer is looking at an 8, which, hey, that is, surprise, surprise, an onslaught. So, uh-oh, okay, this is going to hurt. So against Rain and Rouse again, we got the blue die. And that is another Grievous Wound, which thankfully will be ignored, but he's doing it again, and thankfully nothing that time. Uh, so we're going to take this guy over here, and he's going to go up against Janice Drake, and he is doing what? So he's a Laz Gun, and he's a 5, so he's got uh, <clears throat> Onslaught, and he's just rolling a purple die. So one, uh, one success here. To which I will get a critical success. So I believe in this case I get my uh, swashbuckler. So I can immediately take a rapier, uh, a pistol and rapier weapon attack without having to spend an activation die. So I can possibly kill him in response, which I did not do. Uh, but anyway, it is an onslaught, so he's doing it again and nothing, which I don't think I, I don't know if I actually rolled a defense die for that. I'll have to look into that. I'm not going to do it for this particular one though. And then we got this guy over here, which is a pistol and melee weapon, who is rolling to 20, and he gets Fury. Oh no, what's Fury do? I don't know what Fury does. I gotta look this one up, I think. Oh, there we go. Take an onslaught action and reroll failed attacks. Oh boy. Okay. So, he's pistol and melee. So those are not failed, so uh, thankfully no rerolls there. And Janus Drake will succeed against it with a critical success, and he'll chop back for nothing. But it's onslaught, so it does it again with no attacks. But he rerolls one success, to which Janus Drake will not block it. So uh, Janus Drake is going to lose one of his uh, one of his abilities there and take another light wound. So things are not looking so good here because we still got a couple more guys here. So we're going to take the Grenadier, and he is doing a twelve action while engaged. So we're looking at another onslaught here, and the grenade is the Great Eye, the D six. So that's one success. And that is another, uh-oh, oh no, oh no, that's not good. Okay, I gotta see what my, some of my uh, inspiration days do here.
Really hoping I could use some inspiration dice to do that, but the reroll factor is uh, is actually just a four action dice, which he did not make there. So uh, here is hoping that uh, the next attack doesn't actually do him in. Okay, so thankfully nothing there, and I think that's all those attacks right there. So these guys right there, I, I'm going to game it a little bit and you know put them against Rain and Rouse here. So the first one is going to do uh, a 20, which is going to be a Fury. So this is uh, his attack with rerolls, but it is a LAS gun, so it's not as impressive. So that is one successful, uh, one success there. And the defense is not going to block it, so that's one damage through. Uh, and But he gets to do it again. But he gets the reroll, so that's one success, which will be blocked. So it's only going to be one damage onto Rain and Rouse from that particular one. But uh, things are not looking so good here. And then the next guardsman there is going to do a three, which in this case is going to be a fallback. Okay, so one, two, three, four. So he's just going to go run and hide, so I like that. Okay, that hurt a lot. <laughs> Okay, but thankfully it is now the Explorer's turn, starting with Espern Lacarno. So for Espern's turn, he's actually going to take one of his sixes, and he is just going to summon uh, the Maglev. Uh, we're just going to adjust this slightly so you can see it. He's just going to summon the Maglev right over here, and we're hopefully going to get on a dodge. He's then going to take his other action, and he's just going to get into uh, the Maglev itself. Uh, <clears throat> so not much else he can really do there. So next up, I, we have uh, Janice Drake, and I think he's got to kind of cut his way out a little bit. So he's going to take that six from the uh, from the Destiny die, and he is going to do a flurry of bows and he, blows, and he's going to do it over here because he's going to try and cut them through and maybe even grab a uh, discovery point along the way. So his first attack, nothing. His second attack, Nothing. His third attack. Oh my goodness. So, you know what? I'm going to take one of those destiny, uh, one of those inspiration points. Bam. And we're going to reroll that ladder. Oh wait, I can't. That's not how it works. Jeez. Okay. So that was rough. So he's going to take that. Uh... Oh, he's got to cut his way through actually. I just realized because he can't move through them otherwise. So he's going to take that four and he's just going to do two attacks. Nothing. Okay, there we go. So he killed the Grenadier at the very least, um, who had one wound on him. It's not much, but it, but it's something. And hopefully he's going to go first next turn. But he has no more actions to do anything whatsoever. So Rain and Rouse. Oh my goodness. Um, how do I want to do this here? So Rain and Rouse, they're going to use a double team action. And they're going to use the stub pistol. Uh, Rain is going to try and take out this guardsman right here. Uh, unsuccessfully, and then he'll just try and shake out maybe the flamer, which he will. Okay, so that is a flamer gone, and he's going to use one of the destiny dice, and they're going to do it again, because <coughs> I need to cut through some of these guys. So against the sergeant, I suppose, nothing, and then against the uh, the guardsman there. Okay, excellent. So that is a dead uh, a dead guy right there, and I think what we're going to do is. Oh, I don't know what I want to do here. Um, I think what we're going to do is we're going to stub gun one more time because we do have one more action die. So we're going to try and take out the guy with the uh, the pistol there from uh, Rain. Nope. And then we're going to try and take out the sergeant here. Looking for a Grievous. Nothing. So no dice there. And that's going to bring us into group two. The Spindle Drones, who will not reinforce, thankfully. And what are they going to do? They're just going to 20... So they are uh, in cover, and they are more than three hexes away. So they are just going to alert. So they're now actually at alert stage three, which kind of rough for me, but it is what it is. Uh, and that brings us to Ur. And uh, I don't really have a whole lot I can do with Ur. I think what Ur is going to try and do is he's going to try and... He's just going to try and... He's going to spend his six, and he's going to cut down... He's going to attempt to cut him down with uh, with his uh, long-range cannon here. Uh, so he's just going to be using the uh, the 12 sided die. And he's going to do nothing there. And uh, I think from there he's going to use some of these uh, Destiny dice. And he's just going to move two over to there. And that's going to bring us to the end of the turn.
So, with that having been done, we're going to see if anyone gets any inspiration. Janice Drake can't, but Rain and Rouse still can, so they're looking for four under, which they did not get. So, these guardsmen just go back into the pile. And the event table, we are looking at a four on the event table, which in this case is going to be not dead yet. Oh my goodness. So, they are going to get a guardsman back, uh, which is not good for me. And that's going to bring us to the, the end of the, the turn officially at this point. And uh, things are not looking so good for uh, Yanis and Rain and Rouse. Uh, I'm really hoping that they go first. All right, so we got our initiative deck and we got Janis Drake first, Esper and Lacarno, Ur, Hostel Group 1, Group 2, and then Rain and Rouse. So I kind of wish Rain and Rouse was going sooner. So I think we're going to be seeing some covering fire there. Uh, for uh, for them because they need to get out of dodge. So uh, Rain and Rouse and Esper and Locarno are just going to do some covering fire to exchange spots. And uh, looking for a nice good roll with the Destiny dice here. And beautiful, beautiful five dice to work with. That is fantastic. That's going to give me plenty to work with. Um, and then uh, no dice for Janice Drake. Three dice for Locarno. We're looking at uh, that one is cocked. One, three, and four. Not much he's really doing there anyway, because there's not much he can do. Uh, one die for Ur, which is a four. And two dice for Rain and Rouse, which are a pair of fours. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we are going to get Janice Drake the hell out of there. So he is just going to take the uh, the two and the three from the Destiny die, and he's just, yeah, he's just going to go uh, one, two, three, four, just to get out of there, hopefully. And that's going to bring us to Rain and Rouse, and they are going to do a double team action. So he's going to get to there, and uh, Rouse is going to get to there. Uh they're going to use a couple of Discovery die, but in turn, what they're going to do is they're going to actually use that four and they're going to pull a Discovery card. And we're going to get an Amble Spool. All right. As you can see, I'm, I'm rolling with the Amble deck in here. Uh, they are then going to just use uh, two more Destiny die and do a couple, uh, a couple of double team actions. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I think at this point, Ur who does not have a lot of actions remaining here. Uh, I think what he's going to do is he is going to... Mm, what is he going to do here? I think with Ur, uh, I want to reduce as much possible firepower as he can. So he's going to use one of his dice, and he's just going to move forward. And then he's going to use my last Destiny to die. And he is just going to try and eliminate someone. And I think... I don't know who he's going to turn. Oh, you know what? He's going to shoot up here because I don't want that. Uh, I don't want that spindle drone with an alert uh, level two really doing a lot of stuff. So I'm going to try and take out the spindle drone who only has one health remaining. Three shots. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to get downgraded to a nothing because of cover. But that is going to kill him that time. So that's good. Uh, and then he does get one more shot against the guardsman there. Which is just going to get downgraded because of cover. And that's going to bring us on to group one. So we got to see if they reinforce, which they thankfully do not. And now we got to see what the actions are. So let's start with the uh, last gunner up there. He's doing a 17. So he is in cover and visible. So uh, he is going to be doing a uh, an onslaught against uh, Ur there, which in this case is going to be one of the uh, it's D6s. Nothing. And oh, one success right there. So Ur is going to get a chance to defend, which he will do miraculously. Uh, now this guy with the sword and board, or the pistol rather, is doing a two. Uh, and he is uh, not within cover, uh, but he is close. So he is going to do a fallback action. Okay. One, two, three, four. So that is good for me. Uh, this last gunner right there is doing a two, and he is in cover. So he's going to do an aim action. And he is uh, four away, so it's uh, just going to be the uh, the D8 here against Ur, and nothing's going to happen. 
The Grenadier is up next. Who's doing a 19 and he's uh, in cover with visibility. So he's going to just do an onslaught. So it's just going to be the purple die. Nothing. And, oh, Grievous Wound against Ur. Uh, he'll turn it into a regular wound. He's going to re-roll that and hope for the best. Okay, so it's being turned into a regular wound. Ur is still okay, but he can't really take any more hits. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully he doesn't. Uh, and now we have the Sergeant, who's looking at a 12, who's uh, in cover as well. So we're looking at an Onslaught here. So he's going to do that up against... Uh, up against Ur, but thankfully it's just the D6. Nothing and nothing. Okay, so that's going to give me a turn to try and get away here because Esper and Locarno is, yeah, he's not doing anything. He's just going to sit there uh, and, and play dumb because nothing else he can do. So uh, we're going to go right into the event step for an eight, which is changing conditions. So we draw an encounter card, which is, here we go. So we got loose cabling, make an agility roll for an explorer that moves into a hex with a discovery marker. If the rolls failed, that suffers that explorer suffers a grievous wound. So there are no more discovery ones, so we're we're okay there. And nobody can actually get any more inspired than they currently are. So that's gonna take us to the end of the uh, end of the round. Alright, let's shuffle up the initiative and see who's going win. Uh, I really want to be able to try and use these uh these last uh, dice or uh, actions here to try and and get some uh, extra discovery, but I think I'm going to prioritize getting to the Maglev here. So Ur is up first, followed by Rain and Rouse. Group one, Drake. Group two, and Espern Lacarno. So I think I have a pretty good chance here at getting uh, getting out alive. I'm a little worried that Group one is going first, but it is what it is. So we're going to see what my Destiny dice are looking like. And uh, once again, we are getting five dice to play with, which is good considering I have two characters that rely on those dice at this point. Uh, Esper and Locarno is looking at, uh, that's cocked, one, five, and six. So he's just sitting pretty in his uh, in his little chamber there. And Rain and Rouse are looking at a two and a three, which is going to be enough to get them out of there. So we're just going to do this quickly. Uh, Ur is just going to spend two of those dice. He's going to take the, the two and the four, and he's just going to get in there. <clears throat> and that's going to finish off Ur's turn. Rain and Rouse are going to take their two dice, and they're just going to go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. And he's going to be in safety. And this is where things get a little choppy, because Janice Drake, who I probably should have done a gambit with, now has to try and survive against group one which I'm not reinforcing, thankfully. Okay, so let's see what happens. So this uh, last gunner up there is rolling a 15 in cover. So we see an onslaught happening here, which is going to be nothing and grievous wound. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay. Okay, so Janice Drake is down. He has been wounded. So uh, regardless of what we're doing here, I think we got to get back to the uh, back to uh, uh, precipice after this. Is otherwise we we run the risk of losing him. Uh, so this last gunner over here is doing an eighteen, and he's in cover. Uh, so he's doing an onslaught against Ur there, and he's just rolling a purple die. So that's going to be one success against Ur's reroll. Uh-oh. Okay, so that one saved her there. But the second attack, nothing. Followed up with the sergeant there, which is a 17, which we're looking at an onslaught again. And this is the uh, the last gun and pistol, or last pistol in uh, melee. So nothing and nothing. Guy with the grenade, we're looking at a 16, which once again, it's, it's an onslaught. Surprise, surprise. Hurling a grenade at Ur for one success which he will block, followed by another success, which he will also block. And then this guy with the uh, pistol and melee weapon is going to do a, I guess in this case it's an other, so it's a rush. So in case of a rush, it's move towards the closest explorer, then take a charge action. So one, two, and then a charge action, which is, uh, <clears throat> what is it, a move and an attack, I believe? Um... 
Yep. So it's just going to move move a whole bunch, actually. One, two, three, four. But what that's going to do is uh, bring us on to... Well, well yeah, this doesn't get a turn here. The Spindle Drone does not reinforce, and Esper Locano is there. And that's going to bring us to the end of the uh, the encounter as they get on the Maglev and uh, hopefully work their way back to safety. As the group is uh, trying to like just survive at this point, we are moving into the end of the exploration round. So we got to find out what happens to Janice Drake here because he did get uh, knocked out of action. So we are looking at uh, rolling a, the Blackstone die and seeing the result and looking for, in this case, uh, let's see... I got to roll equal to, or I got to roll better than a one at this point. So that is a 20. So he is thankfully okay. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to lose him. So uh, as, uh, he is still kicking around here. And we do get to uh, see if any of them are going to recover some of their wounds at this point. So uh, how many, uh, how many can I do here? All right. So basically, they're, they're just going to take a, a recuperation uh, thing here. So uh, Ur is going to try and uh, recuperate. And he will get one back, which is excellent. Rain and Rouse. Oh, that's not the right die. Rain and Rouse. Yeah, that is the right die. They're going to get one of their actions back as opposed to get rid of the Grievous wound there. Uh, Janice Drake is, uh, as you can see there, is going to get two back, I believe, which is good. And then Esper and Locarno can't get rid of Grievous Wounds. So that is going to bring us to uh, to the end of this particular round. Now, okay. So at this point, I know there's no more... There's no more combat encounters here. So I'm going to think and... i got to think and decide if I'm going to go through the last two challenge rounds. So we got our last two cards here. Now, one of the uh, one of the ships I do have in dock is the ship for Daedalosis, the Seeker Omicron, um, which uh, will allow me to maybe ignore one of these if it's particularly difficult. So I'm going to actually risk it here. So my first challenge is the Crossfire Trap. The explorers must each attempt to bypass a wall of projectors that fire energy beams at random intervals. So shuffle the Explorer, Explorer Initiative decks and place them face down in a row. The leader then rolls one destiny die, uh, destiny die and reveals the first initiative card in the row. The player who controls the explorer corresponding to the initiative cards must either say my roll will be higher than the destiny dice, my roll will be lower than the destiny dice, or my roll will be equal to or lower than the destiny dice. Oh geez. Then roll an activation dice. If their statement was true, nothing happens. If it was incorrect, one wound is suffered by the explorer for each uh, explorer initiative card that has been revealed. Uh, two wounds for the, oh, geez, okay. The next card is reviewed, and, okay, you know what? I am going to use the uh, Seeker Omicron's ability, and we're just going to disregard that. And I'm going to risk it. Last card, I'm going to risk it. So we got back-to-back. -back. Two explorers are set upon by a group of hostiles. Uh-oh. Shuffle the Explorer Initiative deck cards and deal out two. Place those Explorers in Hex E. The other Explorer Initiative cards are not used. Hostiles are only deployed in the Hex with the group's Discovery Marker. Any in excess of the Hex limit are slain. The rules for search actions, reinforcements, and events are not used. The combat ends when both Explorers are out of action or all Hostiles are slain. If all the Hostiles are slain, both Explorers draw a Discovery card. Oh my... Okay, this is going to be tricky. Um, I think, I think, I think, I think, oh, geez. Okay, I'm going to get this set up and then figure out what I'm doing. So we got our little combat set up here. And thankfully, like, even if I pull a really bad uh, card, I think I'm only looking at max of six enemies here. So I could get really lucky. So let's see who the two explorers we will be working with. Er and Janice Drake. So the two most injured of my party members are the ones that are coming into this. That is just fantastic. <clears throat> that is great. Uh, so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to shuffle up the encounter deck and we're going to find out who uh, who uh, the encounter is, uh, who they're going to be fighting anyway. Let's just get these two on here. Of course, the two slow guys. That's just prime, like fantastic. So let's see who we're looking at for enemies here. So for group one, we're looking at a couple of Urghuls. 
We're looking at a couple guardsmen, and we're looking at a couple Urghuls. Okay, so uh, we're seeing the Urghuls come in here. So uh, group three, there's just two Ur Urghuls right there. Group one is a couple Urghuls. And then the final group, we're just going to put, let's see here, guys with pistol and melee weapon. And I am going to hope beyond hope that uh, both my guys survive this, because this is going to be a tricky one, I think. Okay, so let's see here. We're going to see what our initiative order is looking like here. If I get lucky and uh, both my guys are going first, that'll be nice. Janice Drake and Ur. Followed by Urghuls, Guards, and Urghuls. Okay. So I have a shot here. It's a very limited shot, but I have a shot. Let's see what we're looking like for Destiny Dice. And uh, we don't have Esper and Locarno, so I don't get those two there. So I get three out of five of my dice. And then Janice Drake is looking at a six and a two. So that's not terrible. And Ur is just looking at one, which at the very least is a five. All right, let's go into the first turn. We're gonna start with Janice Drake and then we're gonna use his two and he's just gonna move up there. And uh, what he's gonna do is he's gonna then flurry of blows and attempt to take, take out some of these Urghuls. Now the downside is that they have three wounds each. So this is gonna be a bit tricky. So the first Urghul, is down. Okay, the second Urghul. Okay, that is a good start for me. That is a very good start. So we're going to try and get cocky. We're going to use one of his destiny dice and we're going to move him over to there and we're going to take that other six. So he's, he's going to use the three and the six here and we're going to see if I get lucky and can do this again. So against these Urghuls, the first one. Oh my goodness. Okay. And the next one. Oh my goodness. Okay. I am really lucky right now. Uh, so that, that is that is an amazing first turn there. That That is fantastic. Ur is up next, and he's going to use the, uh, the four and the Destiny dice just to move up here into cover. And then he's going to use the five from his dice, and he's just going to unload with his uh, Assault Cannon into the two Guardsmen here. So starting with the uh, one Guardsman, that's one damage so far. We'll put it on this back guy here. The second attack... Nothing. And the third attack is enough to take out that other guardsman. Okay. So thankfully, reinforcement rules and such don't uh, don't occur in this particular scenario. So this last traitor guardsman is just going to do an action, which is going to be an eight. So he's not in cover. He's just close. So in this case, with an eight, he's going to do an onslaught. So he is just going to be using this uh, nice little D6 here. And he is going to attack... Uh, he's going to attack Ur because Ur is in cover. So uh, that's going to be nothing because of cover and nothing because of cover. So I'm feeling confident. I, I think I got this at this point. So we are just going to take the remaining cards here and we're going to shuffle them up. All right. And we're going to see we have group three first, followed by Janice Drake and then Ur. Okay, and then we got our Destiny Dice, which is uh, uh, losing the fives, but got three Destiny Dice to work with. So I just need to live through the turn, basically. Janice Drake is going to get two actions at a two and a six, and Ur is going to get one action with a four. All right, so this Guardsman is just going to roll a nine. Yeah, that is a nine which in this case is just going to be uh, an, on, uh, yeah, an onslaught again. So he's going to put one and one in each. So against Ur, it is nothing. And against Yannis Drake, it is a single wound. So Yannis Drake will get to try and block this, and he will take a single wound. That's what I get for trying to play fair. So next up is going to be Janice Drake, uh, Yannis Drake, and he's going to use just uh, the three destiny die to get up there. And then he's going to use his six to do a flurry of attacks and hope to kill this, uh, this last guardsman, which he will do. And that will successfully end that encounter. And the explorers get back onto the Maglev and travel back to precipice. Oh, 
Okay, that was getting close. I was getting really worried about Drake and Ur there. Uh, so thank you all very much for watching. Uh, I am going to be filming the Precipice stuff, but that is going to be in a separate video for people who just want to see the combat. All you have to do is just check out the combat. If you want to see what happens with this campaign in the Explorers and what sort of gear I pick up, watch for that video. It will be accompanying this one, if not right on the same day, very close to it. Uh, but it is going to be something that comes. The nice thing is the Precipice stuff is kind of a quick, uh, quick, easy thing to do. And then we are going to get ready for the next expedition. So thank you all very much for watching. Be sure to leave comments below. Let me know what you like, what you didn't like. Let me know if I got stuff wrong, because I'm pretty sure there was some stuff that I got wrong wrong there and uh as always uh just you know keep watching hit that like subscribe it's a huge uh, help for the channel and happy wargaming